With Halloween around the corner or likely already happened when this video is up, I thought it would be a great idea to revisit some of my favorite scary anime, of course, to feed in my nostalgia cravings. Because what sets the Halloween mood better than the supernatural? Vampires, demons, witches, cats, Son Goku, boobs, High School DD has it all. It is no secret among the anime connoisseurs that High School DD is a cult classic that everyone should watch once or twice in their lifetime. A straight up revolutionary anime for its genre when it came out, which you wouldn't believe it, but it was, yeah it was. It managed to reach the highest ceiling in its genre at a time where the scene was actually competitive. So yeah, I uh, just wanted to talk about High School DD because I rewatched it and binged it and it's good. It's good. But what made it so good? Now hasty people would say it's because of the boobs. And well, uh, the budget reserve for the jiggers was actually pretty scary at the time. Although I think it's only natural we applaud the genius behind this. However, if that was the only reason, then one of the dozens of other shows could satisfy the need for animated boobies. You'd often hear people say that they went in for the plot and stay for every other reason that doesn't necessarily have the round shape and come in pairs. And it all starts with its premise, which is incredibly appealing and inviting when you think about it. The concept of angels and demons was already familiar to a wide audience thus being very popular. It was the cool thing besides vampires, and so when viewers were thrown into a war between three factions, the angels who were recovering from the loss of their beloved god, the fallen, homeless and cast out of heaven for a grave scene, and the devils, mysterious and cunning were also the prime focus of the show, it felt like another episode of Supernatural, and without that horrible Leviathan season. Oh come on. At some point, I believe it was around the rating game in the first season, I was actually more excited and intrigued to see how the story develops rather than waiting on the next well-mannered scene. A prime example of the classic, the plot distracted me from the plot. Now while the well-mannered scenes were pretty remarkable to say the least, there's something else that holds the anime together. Should you take away the horny from the anime, I believe it would still be a good show to watch and that's because all around the story is solid. I'm even going to say that it's the pinnacle of a balanced story. Looking at it as a whole, it combines so many aspects and genres. Battle action scenes with heavy use of magic and different type of power-ups. Drama intense moments, incredibly good romance with touching scenes. Actual lore for the series. Now some of these aspects are not done perfectly, they're still good but it's a harem match at its core. You can't expect to have all of these layers perfectly combined, however, it's probably the first anime of this type to do a pretty good job at it. The fight scenes, while they do seem to follow a formula, after each major fight the protagonist gets some sort of power growth, the scenarios of each fight are vastly different and they often require more than a simple one-on-one -on -one fight to win. Plus, there are some twists and turns here and there enough to retain your attention and keep you invested in the fight. The drama is used a lot for characterization, both in backstories and throughout the life story, but it is, at the same time, touching enough to make you actually care for the characters and eventually root for them. Rias and Issei's moments are genuinely adorable when they are not well mannered of course and they successfully convey the emotion between them. Surprisingly, the romance aspect is quite good, who would have thought? On top of that there's the lore. What started as a devil angel fallen angel trinity became something of a crumb. You have gods, demigods, mythic creatures, dragons, obviously Nekos. And is that supposed to be fucking Son Goku? All of them together and yet none feels out of place. They blend into the story building up the universe of the anime to the point that it may even compete with the shonen universe in terms of character density and lore. However, the anime wouldn't be as good without its etchy elements. The story is built around Issei's perversions and without emphasizing on his personality and desires, it would simply not succeed the way it does in the current format. It works as a blend. To say that it drips a lot in fan service is an understatement, but there's a strong argument for the heavily overt sexuality of the show to be very much part of its overall aesthetic, being used to reflect Issei's frustrated desires and the common depictions of devils as something erotic, exciting and truly off limits to the normal people. The show makes that very clear early on when Issei wakes up with a naked Rias in his bed next to him. Rias is absolutely in control of herself and clearly takes pride in her appearance. 
and this sort of explicit sexuality is not at all uncommon in the numerous depictions of devils. Devils being associated with sex is something that we see pretty often in all kinds of media, in movies, in anime and even in the bible, I think. Maybe not in the bible, someone please confirm. Seeing the devil females in high school DD overly erotic is actually how they are supposed to be. I'm not saying that justifies every single titty shot we get on the screen, but it surely justifies their commodity with their bodies. They are aware of their sex appeal that being natural for them, hence they treat it as such. Of course, not every female in the anime shares the same behavior. Asia, Irina and Xenovia, who are god believers, don't express the same desires. Nor do they possess the same sensuality as the devils even though they have similar physical appearances. While two of them have been through a radical change which eventually adjusted their view of morals, Irina has remained devoted to her beliefs so far that she became an angel. This contrast between devils and angels emphasizes on the loose morals of the devils and shows that they are lasting creatures who embrace their sexuality and don't shy away from it. While angels have their purity, it also acts as a balance for the show as not every girl we see wants to do Issei straightforwardly. Eventually, eventually they will. Something that I found very pleasing is that the girls don't fall for him just because. We as viewers get to see why someone develops feelings for him and the entire progression of it. Some of the girls fell for him faster, some took a lot more time or don't even fall at all. Some girls are attracted by his perverted personality and some find it rather disgusting. Either way, he gains their affection by working hard and doing something significant while the girls do their part too. Issei being openly perverted and actually wanting to have his own harem is a huge difference as opposed to most harem protagonists who are massive wimps that try to avoid girls at all costs. His character concept gets rid of plenty of the harem edgy tropes that we've seen and got tired of. I'm sure it's not just me who thinks this, but having a protagonist that's in a harem who's essentially not enjoying it because they're just dull and oblivious ruins the anime. Why have a harem if you don't want a harem? Issei is certainly enjoying it and we as viewers can see that. He was even named the Opai Dragon since his motivation comes from his love for tits. He's neither useless nor overpowered as a character, he's not that smart either but he works hard to improve and goes from zero to hero. It helps that the author had this bright idea to make Issei the servant of Rias rather than him being the master. This way there's a lot more room for progression in both story and characters. Issei isn't the overpowered guy that gets all the girls effortlessly, he's a pawn. Literally. There is this rating game between devils to determine their strength and their position in the underworld, which is like a game of chess but with people fighting, so not very similar. Each player has a different combat style that is represented by a chess piece. For example, a rook is a strong melee player, a knight is a swordsman, a pawn is trash. But what happens in chess when a pawn reaches the other side of the board? It receives a promotion and that's such a clever way to show Issei's importance to Rias and his eventual development. Now despite most of the harem shows focusing mainly on their female cast, which is understandable, High School DD doesn't neglect its male cast. Beside the protagonist Issei, male side characters like Valley Lucifer who's got such a cool design until the latest season, holy fuck. Azazel, Gaspar and Kiba get a good amount of development, Kiba being part of the main group steals the development award. At the end of his arc he becomes a fully fledged character. A lot of the supporting cast not only have interesting and complex backstories and motivations for their goals and personalities, but they are also strong, useful and they contribute heavily to the success of the unit as a whole. They leave the archetype they were based upon and become more like people, with tons of layers to protect them. All of these are sustained by the fact that it is a beautiful looking anime. Gorgeous women doing sexy things aside and there's plenty of that, the animation and design are amazing. Although it is mainly used for body physics, it has some surprisingly vibrant battle scenes throughout the show. Even in its more ordinary moments, High School DD simply oozes style. I love the vibe the old art style gives and I really wish they stuck with that. Now slap a gothic rock soundtrack on top of that which gives the show a fantastic sense of energy and a feeling that it had some real love, care and attention put into it and you got yourself the recipe for the harem king itself. 